Well, this is North Wales, but I'm not out here for the scenery today. What I'm out here to do is show you my DS808 Hotel on this Toyota Yaris hybrid. So let's set the high, set the scanner up on this car now, and I'll show you what it's capable of. This is my personal car. The first thing we're going to find is the OBD2 socket, which is underneath the dash on the right hand side on the throttle pedal side. So we're going to plug it into there. When you get one of these uh, DS808s, it comes in a carry case. Really nice chunky carry case. USB lead instruction book, the cable. A socket for powering it off your uh, 12 volt power supply in the car. And the unit. And everything is fastened in with Velcro so it can't rattle around. This is the unit. On the top of the unit you've got the power button. OBD2 diagnostic cable goes in here. Memory card in here. And... USB power cable in here. So let's uh, plug it into the uh, Toyota Yaris hybrid and see what we get. This goes into the top of the uh, Autel. And the other end plugs into the OBD2 socket, so I'm going to put that in first. So let's go back underneath the dash. And you've got to line it up the correct way. So this one goes in this way. And just slides in. Grab the cable, get back in the car. This car's got twenty and a half thousand miles on it. Just gonna put you down for a sec. As you can see, I've put the cable into the port on the Tightened it up, and we're just waiting for the auto now just to boot up. She goes and lock it and let it load. Everything's very self explanatory on it. All I'm interested in today is diagnostics. And I'm going to use VinScan and I'm going to also detect this car. I'm also going to turn the aircon on because it's getting cold in here. It's found the chassis number, which we're going to confirm is correct. When I can remember where the chassis number plate is, I do know it is correct. I'm not going to bother going to look for it. I'm going to OK on that. So now I'm going to go through a few questions. Q 
gives you some options. That I do know is my car and mine's got the smart key. There's no telling me it's a Toyota. It's a HV, it's the correct model code and with smart key. So we're gonna yes on that. Couple of options in here. Vehicle profile gives me exactly what we had earlier on. We have some hot functions, which are all self-explanatory. Programming fuel injectors, setting the steering angles. Never tried this one, but that's not supported on my ECU, so we won't worry about that one. Tire pressure monitor. This is for reprogramming the tire pressure sensors. It's now trying to talk to the ECU that controls the tire pressure sensors. It will establish communication in a little bit. I do hope so, there it goes. Again, two options. I can see it's talking to the car. As it says there, use this function in case of exchanging tire pressure monitor in there. Receiver assemblies. I'm not going to do that because there's nothing wrong with mine. Let's try signal check, see what that does. That's used to detect each sensor for malfunctions. Let's try it. Let me pick one. I don't know what all that was about. That needs a little bit more research. I know. Let's do an auto scan and see what we find. at the moment going through every single ECU in the car. Well being as we tried the tire pressure monitor hot system let's see what's going on and see if we've got any information coming from the tire pressure monitor.
Let's get some data. So what it's done there, it's ID'd all of the um, sensors in each of the wheels. And it's also monitoring the pressure in all of the wheels. So we know all the sensors are working. So let's go and have a look at let's go and have a look in main body. Let's see what biodirectional control we've got in main body. Lots of tests for relays. As it says there, we can test all the door locks. I think you might have heard that. Lock. Let's see what happens on the door handle. So we've got bi direction of control over. All the door locks. And the boot and everything from the scanner for testing that circuit. So. That's a nice one to have if you ever have any function uh, problems with any door locks and you're trying to identify something. And we've got an awful lot of data pids on this one ECU. a lot of information can be gained when you're uh, trying to diagnose a fault. Let's get out of main body. Let's go into engine. See what data we can gleam out of the engine ECU. Let's see what special functions we've got first. This is for checking when you've had a fault, you put your DTC in and confirm you've actually fixed it. This is for when you've changed 
an ECM or a PCM when you've replaced an ECU for putting the VIN number back into the appropriate computer you've changed. So that was the special functions on this Yaris Hybrid. Again, we've got an awful lot of active tests we can do here. There's an awful lot of PIDs to check. Turn the aircon off. I don't know if you're going to hear this, but the electric cooling fan is now off. And that's now just been turned on, so we know we got control of the of the fan through the ECU. This is the electric cooling fan, um, motor that drives the coolant around the engine. As we can see, we've got no codes on this fan. Let's see if we can find an RPM PID for the electric cooling fan. Let's see what she's doing. Engine's not very hot at the moment. The fan's not running. There's the PID we're looking for. There she goes. I've asked it to run at 3000. The pump's now pumping water around at 3500 RPM. It's a little bit faster than the target speed, but we're not going to worry about that. So again, that's another function we've got. Again, we've got millions and millions of data pids. On this particular ECU, so you can see how, how invaluable this tool is. When it comes to monitoring and diagnosing anything on a modern car. Let's go into the hybrid computer, see what information could be gleaned out of there. Again, I don't know what active tests we've got. Can test the inverter water pump, which is the water pump that drives the coolant around the transmission and the three phase inverter, which lives under the bonnet, because that has to be cooled. That can't afford to overheat. The cooling fan for the batteries for the hybrid system. That has to also be kept at an operating temperature. So we've got quite a few tests we can do. Special functions in the hybrid computer. Let's see what we've got there.
these I'm assuming are to do with servicing. That's to do with initialising the new battery, I would think. I'd have to do some research on that one. It's not something I've come across yet. Let's see what data we can gleam out of the uh, hybrid battery. The one I'm watching here is that one. Accelerator pedal position. That's its resting position. If I put my foot on the throttle, on the accelerator, you can see it's going up. Engine's just started and I've now just floored the throttle. Back it goes to rest and turns the engine off so the data bids are working. Everything is working. Just seen one there, air conditioning. Let's see what happens when I turn the aircon on. Don't know why that pit didn't react. Maybe it doesn't react to the switch. Right, it's just requested air conditioning. But that was, that was requested when I turned the temperature up. Let's turn it back down. Back down to 20 degrees. Yes. So that was an interesting pit to watch. Oh, we've got individual cells in the hybrid pack. I don't know how many blocks there are actually in my hybrid pack, but it's split it into 10. And it's monitoring the voltage of each pack in voltage. So somewhere we should have block resistance internal resistance of the batteries so this is I'm assuming how they do a hybrid health check when the car goes in for a service they must monitor the battery voltage of each block and the internal resistance of each block and they must be with they must have to be within a set parameter and these are all within 0 0.001 of an ohm 0 0.023 0 0.022 0 0.023 there's I don't know what their um, tolerances are but as long as they're all within a certain tolerance, I suspect the hybrid pack will always pass its hybrid test. So if you had that information when you were servicing one of these hybrids, you could pretty much guarantee and say to your customer, them are the readings from your battery, these are Toyota's specifications and your battery falls within that so yeah your hybrid pack is okay so yeah we've got an awful lot of information that can be gleamed through this DS808 on this particular car we've had a little look at 
the totally generic side of it. Let's totally come out of it and let's go. Let's go and have a look at OBD2 and see what information we can glean from OBD2 on this car. And again, I'm going to do an auto scan. I just let the uh, scanner do its thing because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Let's just go through each one and see what information we can gleam and see what we've actually got that's usable on this car. That must be a very fast access just to quickly read any DTCs in the car. And as you can see, we've got no fault codes detected. So let's come out of that one. Let's go and have a look at I am readiness. There it goes. See what monitors this car monitors when it's driving. So it monitors for misfires, fuel system, Component monitoring comp comprehensive, it does the cat test, oxygen sensors, and it tests EGR. That one's telling me the engine, man the engine management light is not on, which is the one that tells you you've got a problem on the dash. There's a lot of tests on this particular car, it doesn't monitor. So yeah, we've got a lot, of, a lot of information that can even be gleamed out of OBD2. Let's just skip live data for a second. Let's see if that one works. Sorry this video is running quite long, but to show you what the system is capable of, it's going to uh, take a while. So that's done the... First of the sensors in the exhaust, as it says there, it's a four cylinder, so they always class that as bank one. Sensor one, that's the upper sensor in the exhaust. That's telling me that sensor's working correctly. Then it's checking the sensor after the catalytic converters. Again, it's run its monitor tests and said, okay. And then it's run the CAT and the EGR tests. It's done its misfire counts for the previous driving cycles and the last driving cycles come up with nothing. Cylinder number one, no misfires on the previous driving cycle or for the last or current. So it looks like every single monitor has run and passed. Let's have a look at component test. This is just an example for you on a Toyota hybrid. Specifically the Yaris hybrid but pretty much all the Toyota hybrids are running the same operating system so it'll give you some some ideas. That's a test that's not supported by Toyota on this car. key is on and the engine is off and I'm going to make sure it doesn't come on by turning the uh, aircon off so yeah well, here we go that was very quick it's read the chassis number there's a load of calibration information there for different ECUs Let's escape out of that. Let's go enhanced vehicle information and see what we get out of that one. In use performance tracking. Let's have a look. See what we get. Again, a lot of data pids, a lot of information.
Did we try vehicle status? There's a lot of information that can be gleaned even with OBD2 on one of these. I know if you're looking for specific problems, you're going to use uh, to the generic information like I showed you at the beginning. So you can get in and monitor your, your fuel trims, engine temperatures. Just fired the engine up so you can see it's controlling the fuel trims. You can see the engine temp engine RPM, engine coolant temperatures. We're not moving, so we've got no vehicle speed. It's quite cold out there today, so. That one there is under bonnet temperature because that's the air intake temperature going into the air filter housing. Yeah, you can just see how much information can be gleamed with one of these uh, one of these scanners, certainly with this. Uh, Autel DS808. It's an amazing, amazing piece of kit. It all comes down to your personal preference, really. What what are you using your scanner for? Are you using it for work? This is something else this one does. History. You can see the last two scans we've done whilst we've been here. Today's date, 31st of uh, December 2018, last day of the year, last day of 2018. And that was the OBD2, OBD2 scan we did on the car. And that was the last time I used the scanner to sort a problem out on a Ford Mondeo diesel. Because I've got other scanners as well, so I don't always use this one. I sometimes use my DS708. It all depends what I've got in the car with me when I go out. But yeah, the scanner is amazing. There's a lot and lot of uses this scanner's got. So there we are. Just a little overview of an Autel DS808 on... A 2016 Toyota Yaris Hybrid.